look at organophosphorus poisoning this is a topic under medicine uh, we are looking at so basically uh, organophosphorus uh, pharmacologically you have seen what exactly it is it is a uh, cholinergic drug so you have seen that in cholinergic drugs you have uh, cholinergic agonists uh, like uh, all this um, acetylcholine itself or um, pilocarpine etc then you have uh, anticholine esterases where you have physostigmine etc these are all reversible and then irreversible you have carbamates and organophosphates actually carbamates seems to be written in both the places carbamates is reversible and irreversible category is there basically we are talking about this one organophosphates mainly because these are more toxic than the carbamates etc so uh, look at this so let us look at this <clears throat> so organophosphates are irreversible anticholinesterases which are nothing but cholinergic drugs okay they come under uh, your uh, okay fine so uh, basically um, this uh, why organophosphates uh, are uh, poisoning is important because it is very common poison in our country uh, people uh, use this as a pesticide okay so you can see here malathion is an example of organophosphate so you can see all these pests here right so for all against all these pests the farmers use it so accidental poisoning can happen or uh, a suicide attempt can happen with uh, <clears throat> with this organophosphate that is why this topic is very important for you for medicine okay and uh, basically what will be the clinical features of organophosphate poisoning if you know this then only you will be able to treat right so basically there will be uh, meiosis that is uh, the pupils will be constricted there will be a fall in bp hypotension the person will be Weak, uh, sec they'll have secretion, a lot of salivation, lacrimation, uh, defecation, micturition, uh, all involuntary. Okay, and then there will be some uh, nicotinic effects like muscular fasciculation, fasciculations, respiratory paralysis. There can be peripheral neuropathy also. So basically, if these are the uh, things that are happening, CNS effects can be there, right? Like CNS effects, you have seen that there can be convulsions, confusion, coma, right? So many things can be there. So, uh, in these cases, what is the uh, antidote? The antidote is actually atropine and then uh, pralidoxime can also be given in OP poisoning. Uh, atropine you will anyways give for OP poisoning and carbamate poisoning, but for pralidoxime is only for OP poisoning. So, you will need to recognize uh, and uh, use uh, pralidoxime. Otherwise, atropine definitely uh, you can give in both the cases. Now, coming to organophosphorus uh, poisoning, guys, it is the most common poisoning in India. We already told you, example uh, of these compounds will be like malathion, diazinone etc so many things are there and the uh, clinical features we already uh, told you but anyways we will tell you in organophosphorus compounds the uh, uh, the effect will be uh, more and it is more toxic organophosphorus is more toxic carbamate is not that uh, toxic and it's of a shorter duration the toxicity anyway so op poisoning guys muscarinic effects we told you there will be nausea or vomiting abdominal pain fecal incontinence uh, increased uh, urinary frequency incontinence of urine bronchial secretions will be more this guy will be sweating uh, also all secretions are more you can understand salivation will be there lacrimation like you can see in this there is meiosis right there is salivation right uh, confusion uh, there can be coma there can be uh, convulsion then what else are you seeing here there can be a lot of secretions in the bronchus right then he can be sweating then he has no control over his uh, bladder and bubble right there can be hypotension hypotension okay because parasympathetic kind of activity rest digest and uh, uh, pee right parasympathetic for peeing so all that you can see bradycardia can be there or reflex tachycardia so that can be kind of confusing so remember uh, 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 hypotension fecal incontinence urinary incontinence meiosis sweating salivation secretion lacrimation abdominal pain nausea vomiting all that you remember okay coming to nicotinic manifestations he will have uh, uh, twitching fasciculations right because there is so much of acetylcholine right that's why and there can be diminished respiratory effort let's use the word respiratory paralysis because the textbook says so now coming to cns effects guys what are the cns manifestations irritability disorientation unsteadiness tremor ataxia convulsions coma and death okay so because uh, cns uh, um, muscarinic receptors are there then uh, uh, all that you have to remember then coming to there can be polyneuropathy we told you there can be peripheral neuropathy right so uh, now coming to management how will you manage this guy uh, basically you will uh, remove him from this uh, site and you will give uh, wash his uh, skin with soap and water because it can get absorbed remove all those clothes especially okay remove the clothes uh, etc right all that we have to write then uh, 
in case he has drunk it right uh, or ingested it you have to do gastric lavage uh, then uh, activate a charcoal all this basically if it is done within the first hour of ingestion that's also important within the first hour of ingestion activate a charcoal you can give basically this is a universal um, what is it universal antidote right universal antidote then uh, you will manage airway breathing circulation oxygen and all you will give that benzodiazepines if there are convulsions okay then specific measures you have to give atropine we told you atropine can be given for organophosphate poisoning or for carbamate poisoning basically for the muscarinic symptoms uh, you will give uh, atropine uh, mean sorry it will help the, it actually helps the muscarinic symptoms like um, uh, of the meiosis the sweating the uh, secretions uh, all that it will help this one but will it help against uh, peripheral muscle muscular paralysis no it will not it will not reverse peripheral muscular paralysis okay so this is what you have to remember 2 mg iv for every 10 minutes you will give till atropinization occurs what is atropinization dryness of mouth or uh, uh, there is uh, no wheeze right that means he is having uh, bronchus is no more uh, spasm right <clears throat> then uh, heart rate uh, will be uh, how much what is the target they have mentioned here greater than 80 or uh, systolic blood pressure is more so all these uh, things should be there and there should be no uh, meiosis all that will tell you atropinization so that time you can uh, stop and then you will still continue the maintenance dose okay this is what you have to give 2 mg iv for every 10 minutes every 10 minutes every 10 minutes 2 mg iv 2 mg iv 2 mg 2 mg 2 mg you keep pushing okay then after that you can give some maintenance dose so maintenance dose have they written here no maintenance dose they didn't tell you but you have to continue treatment for 1 to 2 weeks they are saying Uh, that is uh, later after the atropinization okay then um, <clears throat> coming to pralidoxime basically pralidoxime is only for op poisoning not for carbamate not for carbamate because the op poison uh, op uh, basically organophosphates will bind to the uh, esteritic site of your uh, where is it here it will bind to this esteritic site of the uh, acetylcholinesterase enzyme so it will try to block this enzyme by binding only to the esteritic site so this site is free anionic site is free so pralidoxime can bind here and it will try to dislocate the organophosphate this happens i think in the early stage if you try to give this uh, pralidoxime okay but for carbamate it will not help because carbamate binds to both the sites so carbamate where will uh, pralidoxime go and bind right so for carbamate it will not help but for op poisoning it will help how much will you give 30 mg Per kg IV, okay. See, atropine doesn't depend on weight. Looks like that they didn't mention. But for pralidoxime, they have mentioned that it is based on weight. You should give that 30. That is such a huge thing. 30 mg per kg IV, okay. And uh, afterwards, the const uh, that's a loading dose, and then constant infusion at 9 mg per kg per hour, okay. What else, guys? So you have understood uh, organophosphate poisoning. so these uh, technicalities are very important for uh, your uh, medicine kind of answer so you have to talk about the classification you have to talk about uh, the receptors there are muscarinic receptors there are nicotinic receptors right this one we told you that there are muscarinic receptors m1 m2 m3 m4 m5 nicotinic receptors are there and uh, uh, atropine actually helps only with these symptoms right um, so the effects of uh, organophosphate poisoning the antidotes everything you will be able to write with the dose right so that's all for now guys in uh, this video hope you have understood something bye bye